We begin late in the afternoon of Thursday, September 9th, 1993, in Laguna Niguel, California. After returning home from running errands all day, John Anderson decided to relax in the backyard spa with his 14-month-old son, Ellis. Wait right there. Can you wait there? Ellis loves the water so much that if he sees a bathtub, if he sees a pool, if he sees a puddle in the street, that's bath time. He's going in. Got it? I keep Ellis inside, and it works out great because it makes it so I can get the covers out of the way and make sure it's warm enough without having to worry about him getting in without me. It's down here. We're just getting ready to go out. Ready to go swimming? Right about that instant, the telephone rang. You want to play with your toys? Uh-huh. Okay, you play with your toys. Let me get the phone. Hello? Joe? And when I answered the phone, it ended up being a client. Sure. Um, on the invoices? I heard Ellis in the family room working on the stereo and bangs on it and switches all the knobs. Uh, okay. As long as he was there, we went for the I knew I could talk on the phone because I knew where he was and I knew it was safe. Okay, I can do the special billing for six. Shortly into the conversation, uh, I didn't hear him anymore. Joe, no, ha hang on. Okay. As soon as I rounded the corner of the kitchen, my eyes focused on the sliding window being open. Instantly, I had uh, just a cold, a cold feeling run from head to toe. He was absolutely lifeless. When I turned him over and saw his face, I thought, he's, I mean, he's dead. Uh, he's gone. When we continue. Oh, God, help me! I've never had a call where I was able to bring somebody back to life. When John Anderson found his 14-month-old son, Ellis, floating face down in the family's backyard spa, his little boy was not conscious and not breathing. John's 911 call for help came into Orange County Fire Department dispatcher, Kathy Kelly. Fire Department. Help me. I got a ground baby. Okay, what's your address? Two nine two out of it. Help me. I don't know how to do CPR. Is the baby right there with you? Yes. Hang on. Do you know how to do CPR? No, I don't. Okay, I'm going to tell you what to do. How old is the baby? One year. God, help me! Oh. Oh, God, help me! Sir, calm down. Help me, God. It's very intense when you have a call like this. It's oh, one. God, help me! Listen to me. I am. Okay, take a deep breath and stop, okay? Yes. Okay. I needed to get control over the phone call so that the man would be able to listen to me and I could help them both. I'm going to tell you how to tilt the head back. Okay. Place the palm of your hand on the baby's forehead. I got it. Place the index of your finger on the other hand on the bony part of her chin. Uh huh. And lift upward. On uh, chin? Okay. Is got your, it. Is your head tilted back? Yes. Okay, look at the baby's chest and stomach for movement. Put your ear next to its mouth and listen and feel. There's nothing. Just gurgling. Is it coming out? I remember making a gurgling noise. Keep doing and it wasn't the kind of noise that was taking air in and letting air out. Okay, look in her mouth and see if there's any vomit. Yes. There is vomit? Yes. I knew that if there's vomit there, you can't the give him breaths. And scoop it out with your fingers. See, all the I am. Out. I am. Okay, is it all out now? Yes. Okay, take a small breath. Cover the baby's nose and mouth with your mouth and make a tight seal. Blow real softly two times into her mouth, okay? I did it. Did the chest rise? Yes. Okay, with your index and middle finger, press gently on the inside of the baby's upper arm. Right between on his the, arm? Right between the armpit and the elbow. Got it. Okay, see if you feel any pulse there. Hold it down for about five to ten seconds. No! Okay. The child was neither breathing nor did he have a pulse. I've never had a call where I was able to bring somebody back to life, but I was hoping that this would be a time when it would work. I'm going to tell you how to do CPR, okay? Okay. Okay, place two fingers of your hand closest to the baby's feet. Uh -huh. In the center of its chest, uh -huh. one inch below the nipples. Uh -huh. Okay. Rapidly compress the baby's chest about one inch deep okay. with your fingers. Repeat, do it five times in three seconds. One, two, 
three. Faster, like one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then take a breath and blow softly into the mouth twice. Remember, you're going to put your, your mouth over its nose and mouth both and blow oh. real softly because you don't want to blow too hard, okay? Okay. Okay, now just keep doing that. Do five times on the chest. One, two, three, four, five, and then two breaths. One, just keep doing that. Three, four, five. And two breaths. Okay, just keep doing it. Is that the baby? Is that here? Yeah. Is she coming? Is it coming to life? I don't know. Is there any breath? Okay, it let's, let's like check. She's breathing. Okay, let's check and see if she's breathing. Put your your face. She's got a heartbeat. There. Put your face down next to her mouth and see she's if there's air coming out. She's going. Oh. Okay. The baby wasn't out of the woods just because he was breathing and had a heartbeat. There could be brain damage and complications that happen as a result of drowning. Okay, then let's just go ahead and let her stay as she is until we get there. The paramedics are here. They're there? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Bye-bye. Among those who responded was paramedic Terry Inlay. The child looked in very bad shape. He was pale and turning cyanotic. He had gas and respiration. He was barely breathing, which altogether meant that he was literally on death's door. Just one step in, one step out. Okay, Frank, you're going. Next bag. I thought if Ellis didn't make it, I don't miss my best friend. <laughs> 14-month-old Ellis Anderson was rushed to Mission Hospital, where his mother, Jill, a trauma nurse, happened to be on duty. I was just dealing with a constant battle of reality and whether or not this was really happening or if it was a bad dream. And uh, his respiratory effort was quite... Ellis was admitted under the care of Dr. Paul Labinsky. Jill was obviously very distraught. I then examined him and discovered that his pupils were fixed and dilated suggesting a significant lack of oxygen to the brain. We've given him some Valium. The fact that he was posturing and not crying, it's another bad sign. Let's see how he does. Did he have a heart rate at the scene? Yes, he did. I was reasonably sure that he would live, but his brain was not functioning normally. When I bent over and I touched him and I kissed him on the head, it wasn't Ellis. He wasn't there. I mean, it was his face, but there was nothing in him at that point. What we're going to have to do is just wait and see how he does. I think There's going to be time. Okay. But I can't make any promises. We'd have to watch him. We may have to support his breathing. But the key is going to be him. I was thinking about all the happy times that we'd have. I didn't know how much of Ellis was going to come back. He means the world to me. I doubt without him I could go on. That night, Ellis's parents stayed at the hospital. One of the nurses ran over and said, come see him, he's really waking up. You see me? I ran in there and he was smiling. Hi. Look at him. Hi. I was totally relieved. It was like the entire building had been lifted off my shoulders. Ellis is doing great today. He's just a hundred percent Mr. Go Go Go, learning new things, trying new words. <laughs> John and I have never had so much fun in our lives. To have somebody that age that relies on you for his safety, you feel like you let him down. I feel more than lucky to have a second chance. I'm looking forward to meeting Kathy, the 9-1 dispatcher, to put a face with the person that played a big part in keeping my dreams together. How are you? Pretty well. <laughs> nice to finally meet you. I brought this for Alice. When I heard the baby start to breathe again, it was the most fantastic feeling I've ever had. Good for It just felt wonderful to be able to help somebody and to think that I had been able to instruct the father how to help his child come back to life again. Doing good. Oh, you're so cute. It was just a very special moment. In order to prevent drownings, the 
primary factor is constant adult supervision. Somebody has to be watching the child all the time. Well, that's the ultimate goal. It doesn't happen. So we have to do something else to put another barrier in the way. We've put up a fence around the spa. It has an automatic closing device. It has a combination lock. So even if he could reach it, he wouldn't be able to get in. I'm also a very great proponent of CPR. Doesn't matter how high your fence is. Won't help a bit if you don't know CPR. He's the greatest. I just look forward to seeing him every day. Doesn't matter what we do. The fact that we can do it is all that matters.